Hey there, and welcome to a behind the scenes with Julie. So today I am going to be working on one of my 2022 genealogy goals, which is to get my uh, digital photos organized and moved into a product called uh, Forever Storage. So that's what I'm going to show you today. Hopefully it'll give you some behind the scenes look at my workflow and how I am doing that and why I am using that particular product. Um, and perhaps give you some inspiration to work on your own preservation project. So I'm gonna head on over to the computer and we'll screen share so you can kind of see what's going on. But before we do, for those of you who do not know me, I am Julie Cahiltar with Genealogy in Action. And I help genealogists kind of make things easier uh, in terms of genealogy research. So if you're a dedicated genealogist looking to uplevel your skills, you're in the right place. So let's head on over and I will show you how I am using Forever Storage along with their photo management product, Forever Historian. All right, so we are currently looking at the um, Forever Historian version six, which is the most recent version that was literally released like not even a month ago, maybe. Um, it's basically a photo management system. It allows you to organize, tag. Um, one of the nice features about it is it can do facial recognition. And I have noticed that between version, the previous version and this version, um, that has gotten a little bit better. Um, you can also edit photos. Um, so for example, if I wanted to edit this photo, I can come up here to, I can crop it, I can rotate it, flip it around, do some auto things, change it to black and white, which it's already black and white, change it to sepia. Um, I can do some more advanced things in here uh, as well. So, and do some touch ups. So it's a pretty cool um, thing. So I really like this auto fix because what it'll do is automatically kind of go through and you can like click and see if anything looks a little bit better. And once you do, you can take it and do some other uh, fine tuning as well. So, all right, I'm gonna close out of this. Um, so what I'm gonna do today is I am going to, well, I've already been working on importing some today, um, but I'm gonna finish up with two photos. So I've already done this one, so I'm gonna do these two. So all I have to do is I can drag and drop right into my media library. And I wanna um, import the original file names. Now here I can tag them with certain tags. So I could tag it with an event or a location or a person, but I'm not going to do that because I don't have an event for it and I don't have a um, a, a location. I'm pretty sure it's in Chicago, but I could be wrong. Um, but I, I don't have either of those. And that, with the others, I want to do um, face tags. So um, I'm going to not put their tags in. So I'm going to close this. And I'm just going to go ahead and hit OK and let these come in. So it's showing me everything that I've imported today. So we have this one that I already did. And then I have these two additional ones. So I'm going to start with this one. And it wants to do facial, facial recognition, but these are unfortunately not correct. So uh, the first thing I wanna do is uh, the date that it is putting in here is actually the date that I scanned it. And I have metadata in here telling me who is who and uh, more information like the year here. So I'm going to go ahead and change this to 1972 here. I'm going to leave the caption the same, except I think I'm going to do a left to right just for clarification. Um, because in storage, there are not uh, face tags. They're, they'll be tagged, but they won't be on the faces. So um, just for clarification, I want to put that in. 
And then here I want to click on this little arrow because if I click on the check mark, I'm saying that yes, this is this person and it's not. So I am clicking this down arrow here and I am going to, let's see, who is this? Clarence. Okay, so I'm going to select a different tag and I am going to choose Clarence. And then this one, I actually do not have a tag for, so I'm going to do add new tag. And I, um, for all of my organization, I use, uh, I organize everything by surname, comma, first name, middle name, and then a number, which is their reference ID number or RIN number that legacy assigns to each person in the legacy database. I just use that for clarification so that when there's someone who I don't have a middle name to di distinguish between, or, you know, they have the same name. I get a five George Stoffels in here. I don't know. But I need to be able to distinguish them in some other way. So that is how I choose to do it. A lot of people use like a, a birth and death date in parentheses or something like that. I had started to do it that way way back in the day. And I learned very quickly that I didn't always have that information. Um, I didn't always know the birth date. I didn't always know the death date. I didn't, sometimes I didn't know either one of them. So it really wasn't helping me to do that. So because of these numbers, each one has their own unique number and it makes it just so much easier for me to associate who's who, organize them. And I can always go back to my database and say, oh yeah, it's this George. Okay, cool. I always know who it is. So that's just my personal preference. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and, oh, I'm going to put it in a category. So he's going to go in my Julie's family Stoffel folder. Click OK. And then poor Aunt Elsie did not get a face tag. So I am going to double click on this and I am going to manually do that. So you're supposed to like kind of click on their nose or in between their eyes and then just kind of do this and I can you know move it around a little bit if I want it more centered and then I'm going to select a tag for her and she is hiding down here okay perfect all right so I'm done with this one so I'm going to close this and everything looks good got my face tags my regular tags again I don't have an event or a location um, and that's okay. So here is another photo of just Aunt Elsie and her husband Clarence. And again, we didn't get face tags. <laughs> um, it kind of depends on the quality of the scan. It depends on distance, things like that. So unfortunately, I have to manually do this again, but that's not a big deal. It only takes a few seconds. And we'll do Clarence. And Elsie. And now she's moved to the top because it's kind of these recent tags. So now she's moved to the top. So, okay. So now, okay, we're good. So that was kind of like a quick thing. So I've done three photos today. Um, my goal has been to work on um, doing this for about 30 to 60 minutes each week. So it's going to be slow going, but at least I'm getting something done. So, um, I chose to do three. I did one earlier, um, just so I could kind of show you those tags already in there and whatnot, and then show you how to create one when I had to add in Elsie's brother, George. So now what do I do? Okay. Cause this is not, um, this actually does create um, a, like a, I think they call it a cabinet, like a file cabinet. And so there is actually a file on your computer, I believe that has these images kind of in it. And especially if you modify them or do any of the, the editing that I mentioned earlier. And, um, so it's not touching the original. So when I edited, well, I didn't save the edits, but had I done that, so let's say, 
let's say I want to do this. I want to crop this photo. Now, I can do a specific photo size if I want to, or I can do a custom, and that's what I'm going to do is just do custom. And I'm going to, I'm just going to crop out all the, I'm just actually going to do this. Just make it real tight. Get rid of all the other stuff. And just kind of go with this. So I'm going to hit crop over here. And see, this is a not great quality <laughs> of a photo, and that's probably why it wasn't fa um, doing those faces. So at any rate, um, oh, well, that's also at 300%. That could be part of it, too. So let's go to 100. It's still not a very good quality. Um, and this is also going to help me know, too, which ones need to be rescanned because some of my very, very early ones, I was trying to conserve space. And this is probably one of those um, that needs to be rescanned. So um, I can make a note of that. I can actually tag it, which I think I'm going to do. Um, see, behind the scenes, on the fly. <laughs> um, but anyway, so I, I cropped this. Now, this did not change the original photo okay so i'm going to save that change so now you see it here it's like that now when i go to my photos here see it, it did not change this photo at all so i just want you to be aware of that in case you're interested in using this particular program um so i am going to create a tag in my main categories and I'm going to do rescan. And I'm actually going to tag all of these because they were all scanned at the same time, probably in the same manner. So, whoops. <laughs> Didn't mean to do that. So I'm clicking here and I'm hitting shift and clicking here to select all three of these. And then I can click on this little arrow and tag with rescan okay so now um even though i'm going to rescan these at least in the meantime i do want to preserve what i have so i am also going to move them and i don't mean move physically they're not going to disappear from here but i'm going to oh, send them send them is a better term so i'm going to send these photos to my forever storage so to do that, I come up to share and I do forever and it, it, it's asking me which ones and it says all three are selected three. Well, selected three is fine. Um, there's some advanced op options. Um, I want to actually use the current file name because that's part of my naming system and everything else should be good to go. So I hit OK, and then it's asking me if I want to send it to my library or if I want to send it to a particular album. And for right now, they're just going to go to my library, and I will explain why in just a moment. And you probably also want to make sure that this Prevent Duplicates upload is um, marked so that you're not getting duplicates out there. Now... I will tell you that when I redo these three photos and I rescan them, I will be bringing them in with the same file name. So I will override, I'll probably actually delete these in the media library and then bring in the new ones and they'll have the exact same file name. So when I send it over to forever later, I will actually want to uncheck this so that it will put those over there and um, I can remove the other ones later. So at any rate, here we go. So upload. Okay, so now I'm going to come over to forever and it was already open. So I'm going to refresh. And now we can see there are, oh, I did not change the date on this one. Well, that's a bummer. And I did change it on that on these two. So 
Okay, so I'm going to do this in two places. I'm going to edit the info here and whoops, put in the see in here it wants to do like an actual date date. So I saw that it was using January 1st, so we'll just go ahead and put in January 1st, save that. I'm going to head back over to Historian, and it was this one, I believe. Yep. My bad. Oops, not 1792. <laughs> All right, so I, I went ahead and just changed it in both places. No big deal. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my... Uh, library here and refresh again okay so now they're all on the first of january 1972 so and then there's other photos here as well so basically what i have decided to do i had initially started creating albums so if we kind of come over here you can see i have an events album and within that i have um, a weddings album, I'll have a holiday one and a, a vacation one. And then within that, I have, I just have one wedding. So you can keep nesting and nesting as far as you want. But um, this is kind of how I decided to organize. And then I also have um, a photo, uh, an album for my family and by surname and then eventually i'll probably do by individual maybe maybe not i'm not sure yet it's gonna depend on some things i haven't quite decided but instead of every time i work on this like trying to figure out what did i import today um and if i you know, I know I did these three so I can, you know, do these three and send them to an album so I can add them to a particular album. So I can come here and do this and uh, I can, I, I don't have an album for them so I'd have to create one. Um, but I don't want to, I don't want to do that right now because I, I want to get these into storage. Primarily that's my goal. It's not so much about getting them organized here at the moment. Um, so what I am doing instead of using the albums for the moment is I'm just dealing with my tags. So all of those tags that I had created for all those people, and you, like I, there's, there, we did a face tag for Clarence here. So when I click on him, he's in three different photos. So really for me, this is all I need, um, for that's just me I, I just that's the only thing I need right now is these tags because the tags are basically serving as a way for me to find particular people so for example here's the one of George that he's in so that's all I'm really concerned about um, so the problem with this is if I share this, so like this, this album, you see, it has this friends and family. So only friends and family can view this album and these two are private. I may open those up. I don't know yet, but at any rate, this one I have for only friends and family can view this album. Okay, great. The friends and family view is only by album, so they can't actually come to my tags. Now, when they're in an album and they look at a photo, um, I really don't want to do this wedding because these are all living people <laughs> and I want to sh uh, share this. Uh, so let me go back to this uh, photo. Um, so you can see the tags are here and they will see those tags, but they can't do anything with them. It's not like you can click on them and take, I mean, I can click on them and it'll take me to the tag, but the viewer can't. So, or at least that's what I've been told. Um, so, unfortunately, I can't really share these without organizing them into albums. So, I'm kind of in a 
a little bit of a dilemma, but what I've decided is the tags are good enough for me. I will be adding two admins to my account and they can, they get the exact same view, view that I do. So they can use tags. So like my mom, for example, a couple weeks ago, she's like, Oh, do you have this photo of me? Blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I know exactly what photo she was talking about. I headed over to my um, folder that has all of the family photos in it. And I found it two seconds, sent it off to her. Great. Well, now I'm going to say, go into my forever account and find it yourself and find all the other photos that you've forgotten about that you want to look at and share with your husband. <laughs> you know? So at any rate, she will be able to do that. She'll be able to click on her name or if she wants to share photos of me. She can click on my name or whatever. She can click on anybody's name and, or, uh, or ta any tag and look at whatever's attached to that tag. So I'm not really worried about that. I am, however, worried about you know, sharing with friends and family, um, because like I said, they can only, um, view it through the albums. So I, I'm, but that's not my priority. Sharing it with the family is not my priority. It's getting them into cloud storage. So, uh, I don't think I explained that yet. So let me quickly talk about forever stores so the forever historian that i started in is an actual software program that's downloaded to my computer um and we saw that you you saw the editing capabilities well not the ex, you know the extent of it but you saw that you can edit crop things like that um organize them tag them do the face tagging do facial recognition um things like that forever storage is online it is a cloud-based storage and basically you pay for a chunk of storage space and it is yours forever and you pay one time so i paid x number of dollars for however many uh, gigabytes i have and it's mine forever uh, the, this particular company is all about preservation and, um, for the long haul. <laughs> um, so very much, uh, a good service and it's really actually reasonably priced. Um, and a lot of times, like you can see up here, um, they have this deals page and they're, they're always running deals like just for kicks let's see what the deal of the day is so it's on a, a scrapbooking bundle um, so that's another thing that they have too is they have they do like you can do scrapbooking and you can print out um, so you can do create and print you can do all these different things, a photo book, cards, calendars, drinkware, <laughs> all sorts of different things. Um, and, uh, let's see. Uh, I'm just trying to see if there's anything on storage right now. I'm not seeing anything. Oh, but I am seeing 30% off on the forever box. So I might have to use that. Um, and what these, these are just as a side note um i have scanned all of my photos with the exception of photos that have just me or me and like friends but me with family those are all scanned so i still have a batch of photos that i need to scan and i do know i'm going to have a, a small batch of photos i need to rescan but that's not really a big problem for me. What is a problem for me is I have reel to reel films. I have slides, I have negatives. I have all sorts of things that would require me to basically purchase a machine that kind of handles that. Now they're not that expensive, but there's also a time involved in it, right? And so it's actually cheaper for me to use one of these boxes and have forever, I send it off to them and they digitize it all. And guess what? They put it in my uh, library. <laughs> so when they're done with it, they put it here for me. So I don't even have to deal with buying the 
product to, to do a reel to reel or negatives or slides or whatever to, to scan those. I don't have to buy that. I don't have to wait, uh, spend the time doing it, which is going to be a while. I mean, it took me forever just to do these, all the photos that I have. And I don't have to worry about uploading it because they're going to do it for me. So it's like win-win. So, and it actually, I think is, if I remember correctly, especially if I can use a deal, um, like a 30% off, I mean, heck, it's cheaper for me to do this than it is for me to buy that, you know, specific machine to do the scanning anyways. So I don't see any storage deals right now, but, um, but they do have them occasionally. I, I actually did get mine, uh, my storage space on a deal. Um, and I had a coupon as well. So, I, you know, I, I took, take advantage of that. It's reasonable. So like we can come here real quick. Uh, oh, these are the boxes. So, which is pretty cool, I think, in my opinion. Um, okay, here's the storage. So this is this page right here, the preserve and organize tab is the forever storage. And you can come here and you can check out all the information that you want to know. You can do images, videos, audio, and documents, just uh, PDFs though, and then any artisan projects. Um, and artisan is a another software that they have that allows you to kind of do those like photo books and things like that, I think. Um, but see, uh, you can actually get today, always, two gigabytes, a free account. So you can sign up today, right after you, not don't do it right now, just finish watching the video and then head over and do it. And I'll put a link in the uh, description for the video. But you can actually get a free account for two gigabytes, which is actually a pretty good um, chunk of storage to get started where you can kind of play around with it. Is it what you want? Do you like it? You know, I think that's a pretty safe bet, not having to pay anything for it. Um, and then if you decide to add more, um, here's all the options. So I believe I have the 10 gigabytes. Oh, it is on sale right now. Look at that. Um, I believe I did 10 gigabytes uh, to start. Um, and uh, I don't know what I paid for it because like I said, I, I had a coupon and it was on sale or a special deal or whatever. Um, but it looks like it's $150 and that's it. That's all you pay. You don't have to pay a script, a subscription fee. Um, this over here, they do allow you to have a payment plan. This is not a subscription fee. This is a payment plan. So you're paying it off in 24 months, two years at $750 a month. So that's actually a pretty good deal in my opinion. Um, because their motto basically is forever. You will have this forever, even after you're gone. So, um, and then there's some other information if you scroll down further. So you can check that out later. Um, but let me go back to my uh, library. Um, I think I've covered just about everything that I wanted to cover. So we basically I imported some photos. I did some tagging. I did the facial tags. And when you double click on it and you uh, like, I don't know why it is not highlighting them for me. Still working through this because it's new and things are slightly different. And I was barely using the previous version before this one came out. And <laughs> I was like, okay, glad I didn't get too hooked on that one because this is a little different. Um, oh, you click on the face. There we go. So, um, but then I, that's what I like about this. And unfortunately in the library, uh, you, I mean, in uh, storage, you you don't have those face tags. So that's kind of a bummer. Maybe they'll, they'll change that someday. I don't know. Um, but you can see it brought over the exact same information that I had. Um, 
And that one photo I had to change the date because I goofed, forgot to change it in Historian. But basically I started here, I uploaded those photos and I made, did my thing here. They're all organized. So if I want to look for all Stoffel folders, I can do that. If I want to look for all Lovering photos, I can do that. Hammond photos, I can do that. So um, it's pretty cool. And then you can also do it by person. So a lot of these views aren't changing because, well, that one did because he's only in this one. Um, and then I sent the ones that I processed today over to my forever storage and now they are in the cloud backed up forever and I like I said will be organizing them into albums at some point but that is not my priority my priority is to get them here in the first place and for me personally if I am you know out and about and somebody asks me for you know do you have a photo of this or can you show me a photo of this I can just come to my tags you know, on my mobile device, because um, there is an app too. I haven't used it yet. I haven't even tried it out, but I'm assuming I can do it this way. If not, I can always use the browser to pull this up. It is mobile friendly. Um, and, you know, like if my mom wanted to see pictures of Aunt Elsie, I click on her and I say, here you go, look, see, and then we can look at them. So, um, that for me right now is going to be how I will deal with that um, and how my admins, which will be my mom and my husband. Um, not that my husband will do anything with it, but uh, he might. You never know. Um, my mom would probably be more interested in actually looking at this stuff, but I just want to have two people that are kind of in charge in case something happens to me. So uh, this is, this is going to be my system for now. Uh, until I get everything moved and then all I have to do is I can click on George and all of the photos that are here I can click on them let me do let me do ah, these because there's three I can click 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 or I can click on the first one, hit shift, and click on the last one. And then all I have to do is do add the album and then move it. And I can put it in, you know, five different albums if I wanted to. Um, so that's kind of how I plan to do it. Once everything is in here, um, I'm just going to go tag by tag and decide where I want those things to go. Because really, my tags are set up so that, you know, all of my photos will end up in the Cahill folder and probably an individual folder for me. Um, Clarence's will end up in the Hammond folder and probably an individual folder for him. Um, I, the photos that are in here for me are wedding photos uh, from, a, from a wedding I attended. And I'm not going to go through each one of those and send them to an album because I already have them tagged as Nick and Meg's wedding. So all I have to do with this is go into that album, select all the photos and send it to the, I mean, excuse me, go into this tag, click, uh, select all the photos in it and send it to their album. That's it. So they're already organized kind of into albums, sort of kind of, but not really. But it's it, it will be very easy for me once everything is in here and ready to go. I can just click tag, go tag by tag and just send it wherever it needs to go because they'll already be tagged and tell me where it needs to go. So that's that because that's just how I'm organized. Um, that's how my files filing system is too for in terms of my documents. And yes, my documents will also end up in here as well. Um, that one's going to probably be a much larger project um, just because I have a lot of documents, but I also have a lot of photos too. I realized I had almost a thousand photos in my Cahill folder and that doesn't even include all the photos of me, like I said, that are just of me or of me with friends. So that's a lot of photos just one batch, one surname. That's And I've got tons of photos beyond that. So this is going to take me a while to get through. Um, but I'm more concerned about the photos because the documents, 
95% of them I can replace. Um, there are some that I have in my possession that I've scanned that are irreplaceable. Um, and I may actually try to focus on getting those over into storage uh, as well, um, making that a higher priority. But I'm not really worried about the things that I've gotten from Family Search or Ancestry or microfilm at some archive or whatever because I can replace that. It might cost me some money to do that, but I can replace it if I have to. So, all right. Uh, let me get back on camera and close this down. So I hope that you enjoyed today's behind the scenes video. And if you did, I'd love it if you would like the video. And if you have any uh, questions or comments, feel free to leave a comment as well. And if you want more genealogy tips and tricks and behind the scenes, don't forget to subscribe and click the little bell for notifications. I'll see you next time.